Hi, and welcome to Finance and Banking Explained. Today we discuss the different investing strategies for the stock market with expert advice from billionaire investor Ron Barron. Now, let me start out by saying there are many different investment strategies, and this video is not about finding the only one that you should use. It's about fully understanding a particular strategy and using this to its full potential. So let's dive right in. Tip number one, don't be afraid to put all your eggs in one basket. So whenever you first hear about investing, most people will tell you that you need to diversify and that you shouldn't put all your money in just one or two stocks. Now, while this is true for the most part, you have to think about what this means in terms of your results. Because if you are investing with a small portfolio and you're investing in six to 10 stocks, you further reduce your portfolio. So even if you get a 30% return on any of these stocks, this now becomes three or 5%. So unless you are investing with a million or more, this 3% isn't gonna help you much. So what to do when you have a small portfolio? Well, one of the things that you can do is just pick a few strong growth stocks and heavily invest in those. Three to four is basically all the diversification that you need. Now let's listen to Ron Barron and see what he thinks about investing in just three or four stocks. In those two funds, it's a very important part. It represents, as you said, 35 or 40 percent of, of each of those funds. And, uh, and that stock is up 10 times in the past uh, two years or three years. So why then do people recommend diversification and why do the major funds have 20 or more stocks in their portfolio? Well, the answer to this is very simple. Diversification is a safe and proven way and it lowers your risk to exposure and volatility in the underlying asset. However, lowering your exposure goes both ways. You don't lose a lot when the stock goes down, but you also don't make a lot when the stock goes up. Most major managers are very consistent hitting 7 to 15% on average per year. And if you have a million or more to invest, then this 7% is great. But if you don't, you're not gonna be helped out much by having a 7% yield on your stock. So to sum up, pick your growth stocks very carefully and heavily invest in just three or four stocks. Moving on to tip number two. Tip number two, aim for the long run. Now this ties right into the first tip. If you only pick three or four growth stocks based on the fast growth of the company, you need to give the company some time to actually develop the extra revenue that's going to push the stock upwards. What we're uh, making money on now is a decisions uh, and based on decisions that we made five or six or seven years ago. So we're long term investing. As you can see, Ron Barron picks his stock based on what the company is going to do in the next five to 10 years. This is such a simple and such a sensible way of investing. Now imagine a company that makes product X. So if product X suddenly becomes very popular and the demand skyrockets, the company will still need time to ramp up production. They will need to build factories, they will hire people and then train the people to work in those factories, and they need to work out supply chain issues that become ever more complex. So these production increases will need six to 12 months to be completed, after which you would require a full quarter of sales to show these extra revenues and present this to the shareholders. So as you can see, it will take some time for the stock to actually be pushed up by the actions that the company is taking today. So give the stock and give the company some time to develop. Tip number three, don't worry about stock price fluctuations. Continuing on from tip number two, it naturally follows that you shouldn't worry about stock market volatility. What we worry about are not stock prices. Uh, when we're an investor yeah. in a business, we worry about the business. And uh, the short term, I can't have any clue about what's gonna happen. The reason why a lot of new inexperienced investors lose money when trading stocks is because they follow the stock price on a daily or weekly basis. And when they see steep declines, they easily sell because they're afraid of the price dropping even more. But what you have to remember is that the stock price doesn't always reflect the actual worth of the company. Sometimes CEOs present great quarterly results to investors and the stock price still declines. This happened just last week when the banks presented great Q3 results and ended up losing big. So there are multiple reasons why a good performing company has a fluctuating or declining stock price. One of the reasons could be early investors are taking out their profits. When Apple presented the new iPhone last week, the stock dropped 2%. This might let you to think that analysts didn't like the vision or the outlook of the company. However, you should know that the day right before the presentation, the stock rose more than 6%. So this is a classic case of people just taking out their profits and the stock dropping even though the company is performing great. Before we move on to the next tip from Ron Barron, please like and subscribe to the channel for more finance and banking information. Tip number four, markets are not efficient at pricing stocks. So this ties right into tip number three, where we talked about the stock price not properly representing the company's true value. Now there are a lot of day traders out there, but only a handful are able to consistently turn a profit and an even smaller amount managed to beat the market. 
This is because the markets are very unpredictable and sometimes even illogical. It's very hard to come up with the exact valuation of businesses all the time. Markets are not efficient when companies are growing as fast as those businesses are. Now what Rambaro is discussing here happens mainly when a company is growing very fast and analysts are struggling to figure out what the exact worth of the company is. Tesla is one of the best examples of this problem, but it also applies to new technologies like meat replacement companies, SaaS companies, alternative energy companies, and many more out there. Knowing this should give you a bit more peace of mind when the stock goes all over the place and you see large spikes and declines in the stock that you've purchased. Tip number five, buy stocks when companies penalize earnings. Ron Barron's view on this is again simple and elegant and makes perfect sense. It basically comes down to buying a stock when it declines because the company is spending money on its own growth. I'll let him explain it in finer detail. What he was talking about was how he worked at a public company and a private company and they were both named Goldman Sachs. And when it was private, what they did is that this business, uh, uh, you know, when you're working for a private company, they were making as much as they could all the time. They didn't care about smoothing earnings. When they were a public company, in order to get a higher valuation, you want your earnings to be relatively uh, consistent. So he said that uh, what he, you know, so that's the difference in the businesses. And what we do is we invest in companies that are continuously investing in themselves, penalizing the current results. And when they do that, the stock prices uh, reflect that, uh, that element of, uh, of penalizing earnings. And as a result, they're less expensive than they would be. And so when companies ever announce that they're making these investments in the businesses to grow bigger, then what happens is that the stock prices go down. And that's when we have a chance to buy more. So basically you buy stocks when the earnings decrease and the shareholders are only looking at the earnings per share and not specifically at why those earnings are decreasing. In an ideal situation, the company is building several factories to greatly expand production and becomes greatly undervalued. Now this doesn't always have to come from production expansion. It can also come from massive cost savings like robotic automation or moving production facilities to a more favorable location. These are two activities that cost a lot of money and can seriously reduce production output. While the systems are being optimized, the employees need to be trained and this can greatly reduce the revenue. Tip number six, don't fall for the overhyped overpriced trap. Whenever you watch financial programs, you constantly hear people talking about, is it too late to get in on a particular stock? And this tends to get blown up by most of their hosts and their guests on the show. So when the stocks go down, people are afraid to, and start selling. And when they go up, they are afraid that it's a bubble and overhyped and don't wanna buy in. We've seen this time and time again with companies like Amazon, Tesla, Google, Apple, and the list just goes on. These stocks kept rising and a lot of people didn't get in because they kept waiting for the stock to crash. So what does Ron Barron think if you ask if Tesla is overhyped and if it's too late to get in on it? Well, if you think something like Tesla is gonna go from 30 or 35 uh, billion in sales to six or 700 billion in sales in 10 years, so 20 times, uh, and, and uh, is that overpriced right now? Uh, how many businesses that you think are like that you know, the opportunities that these businesses have are so enormous. And uh, for most businesses, they're gonna have to change models and uh, and people wanna invest in growth. They wanna invest in business and growth. Will Danoff talked about how he wants to invest in companies that are gonna triple in size in five years. Here's a company that, you, that they think is gonna grow 20 times in five years. What's the right multiple? And then you, and for that, you're not even including what's gonna happen when they go to autonomous driving. What's gonna happen when they go to ride sharing? What's gonna happen when they have a battery that's more powerful uh, than others. Tip number seven, money is worthless. Building on the point made earlier at tip number six, which basically comes down to waiting on the side, there is no point in pulling your money out of a stock or not investing it into a stock because you're afraid that you're too late. Because your money is guaranteed to lose value over time while your stock could still go up. Let's listen to Ron's advice on stocks versus money. Congratulations on getting it right. Uh, you should buy back now and you're gonna tell me, Ron, it is so scary, I can't possibly buy back. That's on one side. And the other side is if the stock market happens to go up a lot uh, in the meantime, instead of going down as you expect, and then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna say, you know, you're really missing it. Uh, you should be an investor. He says, I, I, I missed it uh, and I'm not gonna buy. So if you sell, you're not coming back. 
And your choice is when you do sell, what's going to happen is you're going to take that money and you're going to have it in cash. And what you know 100% for certain is that the value of your cash is going to fall every single year, just like it has in every democracy for thousands of years. So you're turning an investment that you have in these great growth businesses and that you know are going to increase steadily over time or grow fast over time into something that you're 100% certain is going to decrease 3 or 4% a year every year. And in 17 years, it'll be worth half as much it is now, 17 more years worth half as much it is again. These were the stock market tips from Ron Barron. Please like and subscribe to the channel for more finance and banking information. Take care.